Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Islam the Way of Life. I'm your presenter and thank you for joining me again. I am Abul Hasnat and I've got my usual guest with me here, Suleiman and Omar. But before we say anything else, let's have some Quran. الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسيق الذين كفروا إلى جهنم زمرا حتى إذا جاء فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتنون عليكم آيات ربكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بلى ولكن حقت كلمة العذاب على الكافرين قيل ادخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى إذا جاء فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم طبتم فادخلوها خالدين وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين صدق الله العظيم Sadaqallahu al-Ali al-Azim. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. It's beautiful to have our Quran. It's beautiful to have you guys back as well. Thank you for tuning into our show every week. And we're going to continue to do as many shows as we can. And as usual, across the bottom of the screen, we will have our email address, which is ikrabangla at gmail.com. And we have our WhatsApp number, which is 0738761618. Inshallah. So if you wish to send us some comments, send us some, uh, send us some greetings, WhatsApp it over to us or email us. Or if you'd like to come on the show, send us, send us a message and we can maybe have you up here to come and do what I've been doing with these guys and a few of my other guests on a regular basis. So inshallah, we will do our usual. We will do a recap of the Seerah. And as from the last episode, you know, I've, I've started to follow this book here, which is a really nice book, which I picked up from Medina, from the Seerah Museum in Medina, which is just south of uh, Masjid al-Nawawi. I was there for Umrah, alhamdulillah, and I was able to get this book. So this book is a very simplified Seerah. Mums and dads, I would recommend you get this book and go through it with your children. Spend maybe one Sunday every week, half an hour, going through this book and then talking about what you've read. Um, inshallah. So we're going to go do that. We're going to go through this book and then we're going to look at um, We're going to have some game time which Suleiman and Omar regularly do with me. We're going to uh, play a bit of games and then we're going to have a quick little General knowledge bash as we call it a few general knowledge questions so I'm going to test these two on to see how well they do and I want you guys to join in. So inshallah, that's going to be our day plan today Are you guys ready at home? I want to ask Suleiman Omar. Are you two ready? Yep. Yeah. Inshallah and always say inshallah so Allah will will that you be ready. Right, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We left off on the seerah last time. 
where we said that the Prophet ﷺ marries Khadija. And before that, we spoke about the convention and the pact between the Quraysh. And we picked up on that because we know that late, very soon, they're about to break it. I am now going to pick up on the next few parts, which is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu participates in the rebuilding of the Kaaba. So the Quraysh rebuilt the Kaaba before the Prophet became a Prophet. And as part of the construction, the Prophet Sallallahu joined in on the construction. And why did they have to do this? It's because a mass flood came. A mass flood came and affected the Kaaba initially. And then a fire took place and a fire, unfortunately, made the Kaaba catch, um, catch fire, so they had to rebuild the, um, the Kaaba. Now, they also had the black stone, the Hajratul Aswad, which needed to be replaced. So, let's read about the Hajratul Aswad. The black stone is a rock set into the corner of the, um, of the Kaaba, and it was removed from its place during the construction work. When the, when the time came to return the black stone to its place, a disagreement arose amongst the tribes as to which tribe should have the honour of putting the black stone back in its place. They agreed to choose someone to arbitrate the issue. They decided to await the first man that came upon them and they asked him to settle the matter. So, if, you want, if we just stop there a second and just imagine, they, they had the black stone and the black stone being a very holy stone, something very important, even before they became Muslim, they knew that the black stone was important, the Quraysh, this is before Islam came to them. They knew it was important and putting it back was a big deal. So they had to decide who's going to do it or which tribe's going to do it. And they couldn't make their mind. So they said, right, the next person that comes, they'll do it. And they were hoping that the next person that comes will be one person from their tribe. So that that person would say, oh, my tribe will put it. So then they waited. And when they waited to see who the next man was, lo and behold, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, <coughs> happened to be the man. So when everybody saw him, the people shouted, Oh, this is a trustworthy man. And they told him the story of what they decided. And they all had believed that the Prophet would choose their tribe because he was nice to everybody. So the Prophet ﷺ laid down a sheet and he said, put the black stone on the sheet and everybody together will carry the sheet so everybody would have a share. So you can see even the Prophet, before the Prophet ﷺ became a Prophet, he knew how to be fair. So they did that. The tribes carried the sheet by its corners to the right spot where the black stone we put. And it was a great honour for the Prophet ﷺ to be finally elected to do the job after the people of the Quraysh fell into such a dispute on who would do it. So it was a very, very important, very, very important task. Now, the next part that we can move on to is the foretelling or the signs of the Prophet Muhammad's prophecy. So, from, from his early years, the Prophet Muhammad had many distinctive signs and characteristics that would lead us to believe, yes, that he, he, we, those are the signs that, led to him, um, that showed that he was a prophet. <coughs> now these signs foretelling his prophet that are, lab uh, that are mentioned here are, number one, the Prophet ﷺ would experience true dreams. Every dream he would have was fulfilled. So that just means that he kind of saw dreams of the future. So, a sign that he was going to become a prophet, he kept seeing dreams of things that would happen in the future, and then they did happen. So, he saw it beforehand. The second was um, that he kept loving the solitude. What does that mean? He means that he loved to be on his own. So, he kept going to the Mount Hira, and he would not just spend a few hours there, he would spend a few nights there, and he would meditate, and meditate, and just wonder about the world around him. So, these were signs, these were clear signs that are labeled in Bukhari, that showed that the Prophet was going to become a Prophet. Now, the next thing was the rocks and the trees will greet the Prophet This is such, such an amazing miracle. The Prophet was greeted repeatedly by rocks. The Prophet actually said in a hadith, he said, I know a rock at Makkah which used to greet me with salutations of peace before I even became a Prophet. Indeed, I know it now, why? So the Prophet understood later and he said, I, um, and even Ali, the Prophet's uncle, said, I was with the Prophet in Makkah one time, walking around various places of the town, and we never came by a mountain or a tree, 
but that the mountain or tree would greet him saying peace be upon, peace be upon you O messenger of Allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah ya rasulullah that's what these fit so even Ali tells us that something incredible like that was happening so all these signs were happening to show that he was a prophet mashallah right the next time we pick back up on the story, we're going to go and what they what they labelled is the greatest event in history, which I would probably very strongly say is is what we saw the, what we call the scene of Ikra. So inshallah, we will pick that up when we come back to the scene next time. Solomon, I'm going to give you guys a chance. Um, what ha I want you guys to imagine, and I, even you guys at home, I want you to imagine that. A tree spoke to you. How would you feel? Or imagine you was with someone. Maybe you were like Ali, and you was with someone, and you saw the tree speak to that person. Or just tr the tree say "Assalamu alaikum." How would that feel? Omar, how would you feel? I would feel s shocking. Very good. That's very honest. It's true. Feel shocking. How about you, uh, Suleiman? I would ah. feel like very strange. That's true. It would do. How would you guys feel at home if you heard the tree? Because it probably will never ever happen again. Be and why do we know it will never happen again? Because the Prophet is the last Prophet. So this is a sign that he was a Prophet because the trees and the rocks will speak to him. And he won't speak anymore. Yes, there, there are hadiths that maybe at some point in the future, trees and rocks may talk to Muslims. But as far as you know, in terms of being a Prophet, that's the last time. So isn't that's a very, very shocking thing. As Omar said, it is a bit of a shock, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Um, well, great. That's um, our portion of Quran done today and our portion of the Seerah done today. It's time for us to move over to probably Omar and Suleiman's favourite time, which is game time. Omar, what would you like to play? Uh, we should play kids versus parents. Kids versus parents. Hmm. That's going to be an interesting game to play. So this is the kid. Now, um, for those of you that don't know, there's a series called the Kids vs. Parents. And there's a lot of these um, games that are out there which are about different topics. So this one we've got here is Kids vs. Parents, Good Manners. So we're going to try this one out. But I think you guys as well, join in with us over the TV. But see if you can get hold of this as well and try to play this at home. Right, so how does Kids vs. Parents work? Well, there are a set of questions for the kids to ask the parents and there are the set of questions for the parents to ask the kids. So, Omar, I want to pass you the kids versus kids ask the parents question and I'm going to keep hold of the parent, um, parents ask the kids and we're going to spend a few minutes oh. testing each other. So how does this work? <laughs> oh, you've taken one of my cards. So the way this works is there are three questions on each card. In order for them to win the card off me, the kids have to win it off me, I'm going to ask them a question and they have to get the answers right. It's multiple choice. Once they've done that, once they've won their card, they have a go and, and, and try me out on a few questions. So, shall I go first? Yeah. Yeah? Are you two ready? Yeah. Okay. I want you guys at home to join in. So, the first question that I'm going to ask, there are some funny ones in here as well. I've got three questions to ask you guys and these are, Good manners question. So remember, good manners. Right. When running to your classroom, when running to your classroom, you knock over a friend of yours. Okay, so you're running to the classroom and you, you knock your friend over. What should you do? A. Run on because you're running late for class. B. Say to that person, be more careful next time. Or C. S stop, say you're sorry, and help them up. That's quite an easy one. C. So A, B, or C? C. You two say C. What do you guys say at home? I think B is quite, A is quite reasonable. You've got running late for class. No. C. And that's right. You're right. The answer is C. It's say you're sorry and help them up. Okay. This is a very easy one. Should you cough without covering your mouth? Yes or no? no. Should you cough <laughs> without covering your mouth? No. No? Yeah, it's um, an easy one. 
That's right, it's a no. no. Um, do you know why? Uh, because your, your germs could go on someone else. Yeah, and that's part of good manners. You don't want to share your germs, <laughs> so you cover your mouth when you cough. Very good. And the third question. Should you interrupt when somebody's talking? Yes, you should, is A. B is no. And C is yes, because what I have to say is important. B. B. Very good. B. Yeah? And I'm sure you guys at home got these very easy questions done. So that card is for you guys to keep. There you go, Suleiman Omar. Right, do you want to try three questions where kids ask adults? Omar, you do your three okay. questions. Okay. And maybe you guys at home join in and try to help me answer them. Should suit jacket sleeves be, be longer than your shirt sleeves? Oh, I and like that. I like that. So before you give me the options, mums and dads join in actually. Should your shoot, suit jacket sleeve be longer than your shirt? Oh my, what are the possible answers? A, yes. B, no. C, they should be the same length. Okay, that's an interesting one. So, should the shirt be more or should the suit be more? Should the suit jacket be more? I think the answer is no because I do wear suits and the suit jacket is usually short and your shirt sticks out a bit more. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, what an interesting good manners question. Thank you, Omar. Second question. Which one is not a rule of good manners? A. Choosing clothes to, shoot the, to suit the situation. Buying, B. Buying flowers for your partner. C. Introducing oneself at the beginning of a telephone conversation. I think it's A. What's the answer for A? Choosing clothes to suit this situation. That's a very tough one. I'm going to go with A. Am I right? No, it's B. What was B? Um, buying flowers for your partner. Interesting that. Interesting. Okay, buying partners for your buying flowers for your partner is not constituted as good manners, but choosing a suit for the right occasion. So I got that wrong. So I lose there. Okay, so Omar, do you want to ask me a oh, couple? Oh, you have that. Oh, so sorry, Omar. Ask your third question to us, Omar. What What do a knife and fork in an upside down reposition? on the plate signify that you're still eating oh have i have i jumped in too early <laughs> jumped in too oh early. sorry <laughs> sorry guys Omar was, what were the three options anyway a the meal was delicious b i'm finished c i'm not finished okay uh, i do like to if mums and dads you should know the answer because if you do like going to restaurants that's a good manners in the restaurant so what does knife and fork being put upside down crossways isn't it in 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 in, in on a, on a restaurant plate ind uh, indicate. It me does it indicate the food was nice or that your meal is finished or you I don't like the food? It indicates that your meal isn't finished. So when they put them together, that means your meal is finished. And when you put your knife and fork crossways, it means your meal isn't finished. So some good manners to learn in the restaurant. Yeah, that's is that, correct. Is that the three done, Omar? Okay, so yeah. Omar, do you want to give me your three questions of good manners? Who should you introdu introduce first? A friend to your mum? Your mum to a friend or a woman to a man? Which? Wow. One? Who should you introduce first? A woman to a man is the last one. Your mum to a friend or a friend to your mum? That's a very, these are very interesting good manners questions. I think through respect, you would introduce your friend to your mum first. Correct. I've got that right. Okay, next question, Suleiman. Who would, who, who should, should suggest moving to a first name basis. Who should suggest moving to a first name basis? That's an interesting one. A, so, it does not matter. B, a woman to a man. C, a, a grandchild to their granddad. So who should suggest that you start using first names? I think it doesn't matter. It, 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 a woman to a man. A woman to a man, wow. So before then you have to say Mr. Suleiman and Mr. Omar. Interesting, that. Uh, next question, Omar. Um, Suleiman, sorry. The last one. Should, should a man wear a hat indoors? Yes, no. I would say that's a tricky one because if you were in a top hat, then the answer is no, which is probably what they're talking about. But if you're wearing a toppy, there's no problem with wearing it. But I'm going to say for the game, I'm going to say no. What do you guys think at home? Should a man wear a hat at home? According to this, they're probably talking about a cricketer's hat, which is a no. So am I right? Unless you're going to play cricket inside the house. You still wouldn't. You, I think it'd be quite silly to play cricket in the house, don't you think? <laughs> uh, 
So were we right? No. The answer is no. Okay. So that just leaves us to do two minutes of quick fire Islamic quiz. So last time I remember I did numbers and I said how many how many how many rakahs and how many um, so I, I spoke about salah. I'm going to try to do Quran this time. So you guys at home join in and I'm going to make them a little bit tricky. Okay. So we have two minutes. Bismillah. Going for now. Right. Omar al Sulaiman. Tell me the name of the surah number one in the Quran. Ikhlas. No. Nas. Oh, nah. That means no. not Fatiha. Fatiha. I hope you got that the first go because these guys didn't. Good. Omar al Sulaiman. Late. What number is the last Surah Nas on the Quran? Uh, 114. 114. I hope oh, you got that right at home. Very good. Uh, Surah uh, Nas is 114. Very good. No, no, he's Which Surah has only three ayah? Ikhlas. You say Ikhlas. 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 What do you guys say at home? Kofar. Which Surah has three ayah? Kawthar. Kawthar. Asr. Oh, Surah Kawthar and Surah Asr. Very good. Very good. Yes. So just in and, case... Uh, and thingy, uh, Surah Nasr. And Nasr as well. So there were three surahs with three ayahs that you could have no, mentioned. Four. But you got them wrong. You said, you both of you said Ikhlas. I hope you guys at home got either Nasr oh, yeah, or Kawthar or Asr. Very good. Oh, we got a few more minutes and another quick fire question. A very hard one. Do you guys know what number surah is Surah Yasin? 36. You guys at home know? Is, is Omar right at 36? Sulaiman, do you know? 45. The correct answer is? Very good, Omar. 36. If you got the answer right at home, 36. Very good. Um, how many... This is a very hard question. I hope you guys can try it at home. How many ayah are there in Surah Baqarah? Two, 286. 286, Omar says. What do you think? 300. 300. No, no. Okay, and what do you guys think at home? Are you crashing your head over like Suleiman? Vicky? What is it? What is it? Or are you being confident like Omar to say 286? Because the correct answer is... Well done, Omar. 286. And the last question I will ask about the Quran is... Which surah would you read? Or are you told to read every Friday? So a light goes from you all the way to the Kaaba until the next Friday. Which surah is it? Kaf. Omar says Surah Kaf. 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 It's obvious. Do you, do you, say, do you say Surah Kaf at home? Everyone well knows. done. It is Surah Kaf. And just a quick little bonus question. What number is Surah Kaf? 55 something. No. Surah 18. That was a hard one. Here. Alhamdulillah, we've run out of time. We've overrun. I'm so sorry, guys. And we've got to go. I hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed this show. Hope you benefited from something from this. Inshallah, whatever we do, we ask Allah to accept it from us. And Allah to I mean, save us from any back. arrogance, save us from any showing off, and save us, and Allah not to question us on their judgment. So I hope you have benefited from what we teach you. Hope you've joined in the fun with us. Hope you will join in the fun and email us or WhatsApp us. And I hope you come and join Omar, Omar and Suleiman to um, do another show, show with us. So until then, I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, mums and dads, for bringing the children here. And I will end with Wassalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.